Gunshots, 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 gunshots. I found a really nice program on uh, law and crime that I want to share with y'all. I'm going to sit back, I'm going to watch. I might do a lot of listening, but I think this is real informative because this is good information as far as to let y'all know how things played out. And that's what I'm trying to bring you right now. But before we go any further, if you subscribe, hit the notification button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the notification button. Don't forget the like button. And the book of Ron Harlem is at aronharlem.com, the website. I... Uh, you know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. I'm over here. We're going to play this joint. This is a real informative joint I found. Um, shocking P. D. Uh, P. Diddy, um, you know, S. Tape uh, shows high profile star. And the lawyer for that is getting ready to speak. And she's speaking facts. So instead of me doing a commentary, I might jump in here and there and put my little banter in. But we're just going to ride out with this one, man. You know what I mean? All right, so sit back, enjoy the ride and the information. This was a very quiet neighborhood in Northern California and heard her and brought her in the house. A new accuser claiming Sean Combs sexually assaulted her plans to file a lawsuit as the woman's lawyer claims she's been contacted about a video that shows Sean Combs with someone more high profile than him in a sex tape. I would say this person is absolutely un undisputably more, more famous than Mr. Combs. Did you hear that? They got a tape coming out with somebody who's even bigger than Diddy in a set. What is going on, man? Um, I don't think anybody would argue if they were to know who it was uh, that that would be a true statement. Hmm. I have the new details about the purported video and what the new accuser is claiming. Welcome to Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Ariel Mitchell Kidd is a lawyer who has sued Sean Combs on behalf of clients in the past. And now she's dropping some new bombshells. And I said bombshells plural. First, Mitchell Kidd said she's working on a lawsuit for a new client, a woman who has come forward claiming that Sean Diddy Combs sexually assaulted her in California several years ago. Mitchell Kidd is going to join me here in a bit to detail what her new client told her, and the claim is disturbing. So we're going to sit back. We're going to hear the claims that her new client made against Diddy. Just take a deep breath and let's just enjoy this together. Combs, as you know, faces federal charges of sex trafficking and racketeering conspiracy, and he has pleaded not guilty to the charges. He remains in jail, being held without bail. The attorneys representing Combs in both his civil and criminal cases say he has never sex trafficked anyone or sexually assaulted anyone. Mark Agnifilo represents Combs in the criminal case. His resolve is the same. Um, he believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. Now, you might recall that Combs is being sued in civil court by about a dozen people claiming they were sex trafficked, sexually assaulted or abused in some other type of way. I told you Ariel Mitchell Kidd had bombshells. The next one has to do with her claim that she's been contacted by a person who said that they want to sell a sex tape in a catch and kill type of operation and that the video shows Sean Combs engaged in sex with a celebrity who's more high profile than he is. News Nation actually broke this news about the purported video. It really got me wondering, who could be more high profile than Sean Combs? He's been a public figure for decades, and he's a billionaire. Ariel Mitchell Kidd is going to provide more details about that video here shortly. And you may recall that Mitchell Kidd was representing Adria English, an adult entertainer suing Combs, claiming that he trafficked her at his white parties. There's news on that front as well, so stay tuned. But first, let's get back to the new accuser that Mitchell Kidd said she's now representing in a claim against Sean Combs. Uh, tell me a little bit, first of all, about this new client that you are representing. Yes, I had a young lady reach out to me about uh, two and a half weeks ago in reference to a sexual assault that occurred in 2018. Uh, by Mr. Combs and another individual that Mr. Combs directed to assault her. She was able to escape 
the assault and ran out into the street and a neighbor heard her. This was a very quiet neighborhood in Northern California and heard her and brought her in the house and the police were called and she filed a police report. I've actually been in talks already with the police department that she filed the police report with. I am actively working with them to figure out um, what did and did not happen and why things were not, I don't wanna say taken seriously, but what type of investigation was conducted once my client made that uh, those statements and made that report to the police. And I am in the process now of writing her complaint and getting it filed in California courts. Man. That was serious. They got a police report of a young lady that ran out. Neighbors took her in the house, comforted her, called the police, reported it, and they never investigated or followed up on it. And now she's filing a lawsuit. This one don't sound like a witch hunt. This one sounds crazy. And there's a police report. No one else had a police report. This young lady has a police report. Y'all want to hear the rest of this? Uh, we're going we gonna to get this thing going, man. This getting interesting. So you're telling me a woman contacted you and said, I actually called police in 2018 about being sexually assaulted by Sean Combs, but yet we never heard about it. Um, she did tell me that when she initially made the report, uh, she didn't say who it was. Uh, she later did call an amend. She said she felt almost crazy that if she were to say who it was, that they wouldn't have believed her um, when she initially made the report. And I've had that similarly happen to my client in the Trey Songs case where Mr. Combs, if you look up my case that's currently still pending in litigation in Florida uh, with uh, Trey Songs, Mr. Combs is listed as a defendant in that case. Um, I also had a case with Chris Brown the following year in 2022, where my client, two young ladies, were raped on a boat at Sean Combs' home. Um, and imagine me as an attorney making these statements, advancing these things in court. No one was willing to listen to me in 2021 and 2022. So I can only imagine in 2018 when she did make this uh, phone call to police and was very nervous about saying who it was, uh, that why she wouldn't have said it initially, but she did later on amend her complaint to let the police know it was Mr. Combs. All right, see, what's going on is he is back in 2018 when this happened, it seemed like he was under the protection of the Teflon cloak of the big corporations. From he went up against them with the alcohol, they took that Teflon coat back and left him naked out to deal with all these allegations on his own when back then they was pushing it there, pushing it there, hiding it there, tucking it there, not saying nothing about it over here, and was working with him. But once he went up against them, that's when they said, hold up, don't you understand the way this program works? Now, let's get back to the show. I don't want to talk too much, but it's informative. The allegations involving Sean Combs go to show you how you might need a lawyer at some point in your life. And one of the scariest things that can happen is getting hurt. It's $6.8 million uh, uh, in it. the police department, including the records department. And they are the ones who instructed me of their procedure. Um, I need it because I'm an attorney representing a client needed to send them a letter on my letterhead, which is what I did. Um, to request a copy of all of the reports and all of the documentations and whatever investigation I would assume that they did, which is what I'm now uh, in the process of waiting for them to return back to me. Now, Ariel Mitchell Kidd is not naming the police department where the report was filed, not at this point. She said the assault occurred at the home of a friend of this woman and that the, her friend knew Sean Combs, who then arrived. This friend who she uh, claims is a person who is uh, in the industry and well-connected um, called, uh, Mr. Combs called this individual and said, hey, what are you doing? He's like, I'm chilling at, at my home. And Ms. Combs said, I'm going to come over. It's actually very funny because I saw a Russell Brand interview recently, and he was talking about um, now that he's become friends with Mr. Combs, it's like now if he asks me to like uh, walk his dog or feed his fish, it's like he's very imposing. You can't tell him no. And it was uh, 
really jarring for me to hear this uh, Russell Brand interview after hearing the story that my my client told me. Now, I've told you in prior Crime Fix episodes about Sean Combs' former chief of staff, Christina Corum, who was by his side beginning in 2013. Record producer Rodney Little Rod Jones called Corum Sean Combs' Ghislaine Maxwell. Sean Combs has denied the allegations that he has sex trafficked anyone. Mitchell Kidd says her new client brought up Christina Corum's name in their conversations. She actually also identified uh, Christina Corum, who Mr. Combs has called KK and has talked about her in several interviews. And um, when he received the BET award where he talked about thanks, uh, shout out to Cassie for holding me in the dark times. He actually started off with uh, KK. And um, she said, I never knew who that lady was. She was with him that night. It wasn't until recently when the pictures have been coming across all over the internet of her that she said, this is the lady who was there that night. It was a lady who I described to the police who I did not identify or have a name, but that um, the Christina Corum lady was the one who had started to make jokes about sex trafficking my client, that she would uh, be very good on the open market kind of thing. Um, and she said that kind of made her feel uncomfortable. And then she got a drink and then started to feel woozy. And then Mr. Combs first sexually assaulted her with uh, an adamant object and then uh, directed the other another gentleman who was there to then penetrate her while he was in the corner pleasuring himself, while Mr. Combs was in the corner pleasuring himself. Mm. So this almost sounds like what's been alleged in these freak off situations. Absolutely, it was. Um, and I've talked to several other individuals who I have not taken on as clients. Um, I do not take on everyone who contacts me as a client. Um, there's a level of due diligence that I do conduct and a level of evidence that I need to see in order to make a good faith basis to file a complaint. I do have obligations as an attorney and the bar ethically, and I also have my own moral obligations. So when we come and talk about things of this nature, I always have to use some type of corroborating um, evidence, either from individuals as witnesses, pictures, something to corroborate that this actually occurred. All right, in other words, what she's saying is that she's not an ambulance chaser. She don't just take anybody that walk in the office and say, oh, did he pull this? out on me. You know, she said she got to make sure some type of due diligence, she's follow up, make sure everything is on, everything coincide before she just take the case because she's not an ambulance chaser. Ambulance chaser is somebody that anytime there's an accident, there's a lawyer there saying, here's my card, come on, we can sue them, your back hurt, your neck hurt, let's go, let's go to the hospital, get a police report within 24 hours and we'll get the bag. All right. So I've had other individuals call me and tell me very similar stories, but unfortunately those individuals were not a American citizens. They were uh, na foreign nationals who were trafficked into Miami by Mr. Combs. But because I could not verify their story, I was unable to take them on as clients. So she says Christina Corum was there present. This was Sean Combs's chief of staff until somewhat recently. But this is somebody who knows everything about what's going on with Sean Combs. Uh, do you plan on naming her in the suit? In Absolutely. Her? She will be named as a defendant in this lawsuit. I, I'm coming after every, just like Mr. Combs was listed as a defendant in uh, the Trey Songs lawsuit, anybody who had something to do with it, I'm not going to shy away from coming uh, after them. Um, it, it, I think there should be other people indicted with Mr. Combs, but you know, as the government goes, they just want the big fish. But the problem is the big fish can't be the big fish without the little fish helping them uh, accomplish their nefarious goals. So Ariel Mitchell Kidd says Sean Combs and Christina Corum will be named in this lawsuit. Quorum's social media has gone dark over the last six months, and she's nearly impossible to find. Now to the video that Mitchell Kidd says she's seen screen grabs of showing Combs and a person more high profile than Combs engaged in sex. Mitchell Kidd told me how she became aware of the video. So um, about a month ago, I got contacted by an individual purporting to have um, some very sensitive information. And um, they also purported to me to have they're in possession of three tapes, not just one tape uh, with Mr. Combs, but they were only interested in uh, pursuing this one tape. And we're looking for legal representation, mainly like you just said, because they had saw me being actively involved in uh, civil lawsuits against Mr. Combs, that I would be somebody they would interested in to 
uh, facilitate doing something with the tapes. Um, initially, I wasn't sure and they weren't exactly clear on whether or not it was going to be like a catch and kill or facilitating the sale to another third party. Um, I actually called one of my business partners and mentors and had been telling him about this pretty much since the onset of it. Uh, I, they invited me, the individuals who have, have the video invited me to California, to LA, to come and view the tapes in person. Um, I was hesitant to do so only because once I know something, I'm obligated uh, based on being a, a officer of the court to tell the court what I saw and what I knew. They offered to send me screenshots uh, through text messages, which I declined. And I ended up saying, well, let's FaceTime and then you can show me uh, this way. I have a sense of uh, no evidence or plausible deniability in terms of things that I've actually received or actually seen with my own two eyes. And in those uh, couple of stills that they showed me was uh, Mr. Combs and another uh, very shocking, I would uh, imagine, very jarring for a lot of people, individuals in a, in a very pornographic nature. So, Ariel, I have to push you a little bit on this. Um, you've said it's somebody more high profile, and you're now you're saying individuals, plural, uh, more high profile than Sean Combs. I mean, are we talking more high profile in Hollywood? Are we talking a politician? I mean, what, what are we talking um, about here? No, it, it's someone in the entertainment industry, and I would say this person is absolutely Un undisputably more more famous than Mr. Combs. Um, I don't think anybody would argue if they were to know who it was uh, that that would be a true statement. So the person in the video who's more high profile than Sean Combs, is this a man or a woman? I I'm not going to say. Now, I don't want to get too graphic, but I asked Mitchell Kidd about what else she could see in the video and who. And this is what, you know, what prosecutors would call a freak off tape um i'm i can't see other people in the video um i can't determine i actually called one of my other clients uh I, when i got this call thursday they finally thursday night called me and came out with it and said we're ready to move forward with selling this tape can you broker the deal we'll give you x percentage to sell this tape to the other individual in the tape and I was like, uh, let me, let me, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of really pulled back a lot and said, well, let me make some phone calls and I'll, I'll let you know. So one of the phone calls was to another client that I have who I know to have been a friend of the individual who they wanted to sell the tape to and was very close to that individual around the time the tape would have been made. So I wanted to get uh, his perspective on what he felt, uh, my client, how he felt about just everything in general, uh, would this be something that the other person would be interested in purchasing? Would this, uh, how, how should I feel about participating in this? Um, I, I'm talking to my client now to see if he's willing to talk about that conversation that we had, Because, but I also feel like the minute he does that, everybody will automatically know who it is. Have you ever been contacted about something like that before and, and asked to broker a deal? Absolutely. I do this behind the scenes for several A-list a celebrities, people I would never tell you about or anybody else about because I'm paid very well to do this for them and to catch and kill a lot of things on their behalf, um, things that either they may have gotten themselves into or somebody else got them into. So uh, this is not something I'm a novice on. I've done it many a times before. However, this is a lot more high profile now that the feds are involved and the other individual i was I, i'm actually more concerned for the other individual in the tape than i am mr combs now you might be asking yourself why is ariel mitchell kid making this public the information about the videos with sean combs and somebody else and part of the reason why i made this statement uh friday was <laughs> how do i say I'm very concerned about the other person in the video. I was concerned that the individuals who contacted me to sell the video, if they were to do something, um, I didn't want anybody to say I had knowledge of something and I didn't say anything, one. And two, if something were to happen to me because of this knowledge that I had, I wanted it to be known that, that like, look at these people because it'd probably be them who uh, would have done something to me. Not that I'm per se fearful, but anything, it's been a crazy tipsy-topsy world, especially when we're talking about Mr. Combs. 
have you been threatened at all since you've become involved with, you know, especially with Adria English, obviously, but have you received any threats? I was threatened by Mr. Combs previously. So, uh, in my work with the Trey Songs case, um, I was told by several individuals, including a celebrity chef and uh, some other people who were close to him, that if I didn't cease my persistence in that lawsuit and then the other the situation with Chris Brown, that uh, my life was in danger. Wow. Um, did you ever report that to law enforcement? I, I did not. I didn't want to in, include the other people. I just bought more guns and then I moved out of the state. I reached out to Sean Combs's reps for comment on this new accuser, the video, and Mitchell Kidd's claims that Combs had previously threatened her when she sued him as part of the Trey Songs lawsuit. At the time of this recording, I have not received a response. Songs has denied the claims in that suit. Now back to Adria English, that adult entertainer who's suing Sean Combs, accusing him of sex trafficking her at his white parties from 2004 to 2009. Mm -hmm. Combs has denied he has sex trafficked anyone. I want to talk just briefly about Adria English, uh, somebody that you filed suit on behalf of um, in the last many months. It was in July. Um, you're no longer representing her. Unfortunately, uh, me and Ms. English had an issue with a violation, a breach of our contract. So uh, I have had to stop my representation. Once we get to a point where I have a client breaching a contract, I have to end the representation. So there you have it. And we'll check back in on this new accuser when the suit is filed. And that's it for this episode of Crime mm. Fix. I'm Ian Jeanette Levy. Thanks so much for being with me. I'll see you back here next time on lawsuit. At the time of this recording, I have not received a response. All uh, right. So that's where we at, man. You got big, powerful people like Trey Songs and everybody involved in it. I just wanted y'all to really see that, uh, you know, here it is people that have these direct evidence all i give is my opinion and my street perspective because like i said this is a gangster channel for gangsters and that's how we moving if you subscribe hit the notification bell if you not subscribe subscribe and hit the notification bell definitely hit the like button cash app is on the screen make sure it says uh it was created in 2020 when you hit the icon all right you can cop the book at aurorainharlem.com the website Let's tap out. I cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. Hey. Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix, yeah. what he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up 10 toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this, Real. take a little gully posse and put it in haul, uh -huh. he cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom, Back. drop the book, you should go and get it, an Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit, yeah. then you could consider yourself LinkedIn, Real. sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, uh -huh. how he went through it so you ain't gotta go do uh -huh. it, did not pay attention would be stupid, talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. 
treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper thing. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community ours. So we can give back to the...